Primary 6 Listening Comprehension Practice Listening Comprehension Practice for Primary 6 Instructions to Teachers Before you begin this practice listening exercise, please check that the volume of the speaker is audible to all your students. Adjust the volume of the speaker to ensure that all your students are comfortable with the level of volume. Instructions to Students In this practice listening exercise, you'll hear seven passages in total. You will hear each passage twice. In the question paper, you'll see the questions and three options for each question. Only one of the three options is the correct or the best answer. Choose the option which you think is the correct or best answer. Then put a tick in the box next to the option you have chosen as your answer. You will now hear 15 seconds of music before the exercise begins. Listen to passage 1, then answer questions 1 and 2. Good morning students and teachers. I am sure all of you are looking forward to the excursion today. The buses are here. There are three buses, bus A, bus B and bus C. Students in the red group will take bus. Those in the green group will be in bus B and blue. Group students in bus C. Teachers, please ensure your students board the right bus. We will be visiting four places today. Before we go to the Museum of Asia, we will stop at the new environment friendly restaurant for breakfast. The restaurant owner will tell us about the features of the restaurant that makes it environment friendly. After visiting the museum, we will be driven to the Eastern Harbor where we will see loading and unloading of containers from ships. Finally, we will go to the International Airport Terminal before we return to school at about 5 o'clock. Your teachers will give you more information about the activities you will do during the excursion. Thank you. Question 1. Which bus should the students in blue group take? Question 2. At the end of the excursion, where will the students return to school from? Listen to passage 2, then answer questions 3 and 4. Hello, Amir. I need your help. Hello, Akshar. Sure. How can I help you? I need to go to the library. Can you tell me how to go there, please? There are a few libraries. Which library do you want to go to? The new library that was opened to public last month. Oh, that's called the New Central Library. I went there last week from home. Are you going there from your home or from school? School. All right. First, you need to take a bus, bus number 63, from the bus stop at Meridian Road. You alight after three stops and walk to Rose Street. From the bus stop there, you have to board bus number 163. You get off the bus at Faber Station and take the monorail to the new library building. The monorail station you should get off is just next to the library. Looks like a long journey. How long will it take to get there? Approximately an hour. That long? I'd better take a book with me to read during the long trip. Good idea. Also take a bottle of water and a packet of chips to keep you occupied. I don't think I want to eat and drink during the journey. Enjoy the trip to the library. Thank you, Amir. Bye. Bye, Aksha. 
Question 3. Where will Aksha's trip to the library start? Question 4. What will Aksha take with her for the trip? Listen to passage 3, then answer questions 5 and 6. It was a Sunday when Rashida went to an exhibition. When she entered the exhibition hall through door 2, it was 9.0 am. She headed straight for the rock climbing booth as she was an avid rock climber. Then she went to the computer accessories booth. Then she went on to the computers booth. As nothing interested her there she moved to the printers booth before going to the games booth. An hour later she left the hall through door 3. It was 10 am. Romario walked into the exhibition hall. As he has been looking for a printer, he went to the printer's booth first. He bought a color printer he wanted and headed for the board games booth, but before going there, he went to the toys booth. Then, he was at the computer's booth for about 15 minutes before going on to the computer accessories booth where he bought a wireless mouse, after which he headed straight for door 1 and left the hall. Question 5. Which was the last booth that Rashida visited? Question 6. Which of the following was the path taken by Romero in the exhibition hall? Listen to passage 4, then answer questions 7 and 8. A man experienced horrifying moments as he tried to fend off two stray dogs one night. Mr. Leung was returning home after a movie. He parked his car and got off to walk to his apartment block when he heard a growling sound coming from behind him. No one seemed to be around and when he turned, he saw behind him two ferocious dogs. He picked up a big branch that had fallen off a tree and tried to shoo off the wild dogs. Then, he remembered that animals will be afraid of fire. He took a lighter from his pocket and tried to set the branch on fire. It could not be set on fire. But he kept trying. Meanwhile, the dog's growl grew louder. Just then, a man came riding on a bicycle. The minute he saw one of the ferocious dogs running towards him, he turned around and sped off. By then, Mr. Leung managed to have the branch lit up. He went forward towards the dog with the yellow-orange coloured fire shouting very loudly. As soon as the dogs saw him charging noisily towards them with the burning branch, they turned and started running. Mr. Leung ran behind them with his loud yells. Soon, the dogs disappeared into the thick bushes. Mr. Leung extinguished the fire and turned back to walk towards his apartment block when he heard that familiar soft growl again. Question 7. What made the moments horrifying for the man? Question 8. After extinguishing the fire, Mr. Leong. Question 
Listen to passage 5, then answer questions 9, 10, 11, and 12. The well-known American president, Abraham Lincoln, was born on February 12, 1809 to Nancy and Thomas Lincoln in a one-room log cabin in Hardin County, Kentucky. His family moved to southern Indiana in 1816. Lincoln attended school only for a short time as he had to work to support his family. In 1830, his family moved to the southern state of Illinois. There Lincoln worked on a riverboat that traveled on the Mississippi River to the state of New Orleans. After settling in the town of New Salem, he worked as a shopkeeper and the postmaster. Lincoln then became involved in local politics and won at an election to become a legislator in the state of Illinois when he was 25 years of age. He wanted no harm for anyone and wanted to help all people, he said, with malice toward none, with charity for all. Lincoln's mother passed away when he was only nine years old. He was cared for by his sister, Sarah. Although he did not go to school much, Lincoln was very interested in books and learning. Most of his learning came from the books he borrowed. On the night of April 14, 1865, an actor, John Wilkes Booth, slipped into the Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., and shot President Lincoln in the back of the head. Lincoln was carried to a boarding house across the street from the theater, but he never regained consciousness and died in the early morning hours of April 15, 1865. Lincoln's assassination made him a national hero. On April 21, 1865, a train carrying his coffin left Washington. D. C. On its way to Springfield, Illinois, where he would be buried on May 4, Abraham Lincoln's funeral train traveled through 180 cities and seven states so that mourners could pay homage to their president. Today, Lincoln's birthday is honored on President's Day, which falls on the third Monday of February. One of his famous sayings is, nothing valuable can be lost by taking time. Question 9. Based on what you have heard, which is correct about Abraham Lincoln? Question 10. While living in Illinois, Lincoln worked as a Question 11. Lincoln said, with malice towards none, with charity for all. This means? Question 12. What happened on April 14, 1865? Listen to passage 6. Then answer the questions 13, 14, 15, and 16. Can I speak to Akbar, please? Akbar speaking. Hello, Akbar. This is Marsha Lee. We met at my school's oratorical contest last semester, remember? Yes, Marsha. I remember. I think you will know that there is a speech competition this semester to be held in your school. Yes, yes, I know that. I am taking part and I've been asked to come for a rehearsal next Thursday. Are you taking part as well? Yes, of course. I wouldn't miss such a contest. I just took part in the upper primary debate. Great that you're coming to my school next week. I'm not sure how to get to your school. I will tell you. Are you coming from home or from school? School. From the train station near your school, take the eastbound train and alight at Tagore Station. From there, take the southbound train and get off at Chingay Station. Then exit the station and take bus number 12B. 
a light after five stops, and my school will be on your right. Looks like a long and difficult journey with so many changes. Yes, and it will take you about one hour and 45 minutes. I will rather take a taxi even though it will be a little expensive. Thanks so much for talking to me. I will see you next Thursday. Bye, Akbar. Bye, Masha. Question 13. Akbar has just taken part in... Question 14. Why did Masha call Akbar? Question 15. According to Masha, the journey was... Question 16. In the end, Marsha decided to... Listen to passage 7, then answer questions 17, 18, 19, and 20. A villager, Hung Li, and his wife were traveling when they saw a big crowd in the middle of a field in a village. They went to the spot and saw a bodybuilder carrying a huge sack of rice on his shoulder. I can carry a thousand times more weight, said Hung Li in a loud voice, startled. The bodybuilder dropped the sack. Then Hung Li said, Why, I can carry that hill on my bare shoulder. Pointing to the hill nearby, the bodybuilder said, Oh, let's see, you do it. Did I say I'll do it now? Asked Hung Li. The feat requires a lot of preparation. He added, Hung Li asked him, How long did you take to prepare for this feat of carrying the sack of rice? Six months, replied the bodybuilder. How long will you take? The village chief asked Hung Li, nine months, answered Hung Li and added, I need to eat a lot to build my muscles, I need someone to massage my body every day. The village chief said that he will provide them with a house and all that he would need, we will meet here nine months from now, the village chief said and left. Hung Li and his wife led an enjoyable and easy life in the village, soon it was the day everyone was waiting for, the whole village assembled at the field, the village chief signaled to begin the show. Hung Li stood in a circle of people seated all round. The village chief became impatient. What are you waiting for? He yelled. I'm waiting for your men to place the hill on my shoulder, said Hung Li calmly. The village chief shouted in anger, you said. Hung Li cut him short and said, I said I will carry that hill, and I'm waiting for your men to place it on my shoulder. But who will lift the hill? Asked the village chief in bewilderment, that's your problem, Hung Li said. Question 17. What made Hung Li and his wife go to the spot where there was a crowd? Question 18. What did Han Li do to avoid carrying out the feat he said he could do? Question 19. Which of the following shows the correct sequence of events?
Question 20. Which one of the following titles best suits the story? 